Welcome to Bay Sunday. I'm Melissa Griffin Kane. Our next guest was president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and just recently left after being elected to state assembly in the 17th district representing San Francisco. Let's say hi to David Chu. Assemblyman Chu, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Melissa. So you were in San Francisco politics, like we just said, and mm -hmm. now you are in Sacramento. Let's talk about what that's been like. I mean, San Francisco doesn't even have a single elected Republican official, and now there you are with folks from all over the state. It's, uh, it's a very different experience. Uh, I'm in a legislative body that's now 10 times the size of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. And yes, uh, there are quite a few Republicans, and uh, we're all learning to uh, interact with each other, representing the diversity of the great state of California. Well, I remember when you ran for assembly, you were portrayed as sort of being a more moderate, a more business-friendly candidate. On the political spectrum in Sacramento, uh, where are you on, on that spectrum versus San Francisco's more sort of narrow spectrum of sort of liberal and more liberal? In Sac versus Sacramento? Well, you know, certainly in San Francisco, it's been important for me to, to reflect our San Francisco values. And uh, I was someone who is considered uh, probably in the middle of, uh, of where our political spectrum is here in San Francisco. In Sacramento, I'm absolutely uh, one of the, you know, part of the uh, most progressive members uh, that we have in our state. Uh, we have an enormous diversity of perspectives uh, in so our you're legislature. you're all the way left out there. Well, you, you have uh, <laughs> folks who are self-described Tea Party Republicans all the way to progressive Democrats uh, from, uh, from liberal cities like San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, and other places. And uh, it's, uh, it's a truly diverse, challenging, and fascinating place. Are, have you found Republicans that you can work with? Are there some more, maybe more moderate, or, or even just issues like uh, criminal justice reform we're mm -hmm. seeing as one that can draw, that's drawing sort of support from both sides of the political spectrum. Um, how has that been in terms of reaching out? So absolutely, I'm just getting to know my colleagues and, and there are a number who have indicated a willingness to work with uh, those of us who are San Francisco Democrats on issues that are important to us. One issue in particular uh, that is my top priority is affordable housing. Uh, and really looking to get more sources of funding to build the housing that we desperately need, not just in San Francisco, but up and down the state of California. Uh, there are enormous housing challenges in San Diego, in Orange County, in Los Angeles, the Inland Empire, Central Valley, and the Bay Area, and here in our city. Is that something you can work with Republicans on? Yeah, my first bill, uh, I've proposed a new affordable housing tax credit. And, uh, and, and, and tax credits uh, to really incent private sector and federal dollars into cities and parts of our state that need more affordable housing. Uh, and I have gotten some traction uh, with folks across the political aisle uh, in this way of really financing, building more housing and affordable housing around the state. Now, as a new member of the assembly, how do you, how do you get to know the other assembly members? You say you, you've met some Republicans, you're getting to know them. I imagine a retreat where there's trust falls and all sorts of activities that you get to do together to get to know each other. Are there those activities to, to allow you to get past just those sort of people in your region? Well, I have not done any, uh, any trust falls yet, <laughs> uh, but the Democratic Caucus, we have actually done a number of, uh, of meetings and policy retreats to really set an agenda uh, for the state legislature in moving forward issues uh, important around higher education, uh, making sure that everyone has access to health care, uh, making sure that we have a stable social safety net for folks folks who are still struggling, making sure that we're investing in infrastructure in our roads and in housing. Uh, so we've been having these conversations uh, in that way. And uh, I've uh, been having meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, coffees, uh, meals, with as many of my colleagues who uh, want to sit down with me and, and chat about where our respective policies go. Now, I want to switch gears just a little bit because we saw in the, for example, the President's State of the Union address now, the, the issue of paid sick leave mm -hmm. is, is front and center in, in the Democratic Party agenda. And that's something that, that to some degree originated here in San Francisco. We were at least the first city to pass mm -hmm. such a law mandating paid sick leave. Now we've got the statewide law and it's, it's on the national agenda. Um, are there other issues that you see that you've worked on as a, a member of the mm -hmm. San Francisco Board of Supervisors mm -hmm. that you think will have traction on a state level or perhaps a national level going forward? Well, I, uh, this past week, proposed a law that unanimously passed at the San Francisco Board of Supervisors this past year uh, to establish more rules around fair scheduling. Uh, you or I, or many people in the workplace, we can count on what our work schedules are like to figure out how to balance work family issues, uh, pick up the kid at school, uh, be able to get to the doctors, be able to uh, enjoy one's life. 
but for literally millions of Californians who are in low-wage jobs, often in retail or food environments, uh, who are working part-time, um, they don't have the same type of, of, of scheduling predictability. Uh, in fact, what we've found is there are scores of scores of workers uh, who don't have the ability to know when they're going to work in their often minimum wage part-time job. And in San Francisco, we established a requirement uh, that, uh, that certain employers need to provide at least two weeks of a schedule to their employees so that uh, an employee knows when uh, to be able to do the things that they need to do in their lives, including potentially having a second job to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've recently proposed this in Sacramento. Uh, I do have support from a number of colleagues around the state. This is an important thing for so many workers particularly low-wage retail workers who are really struggling. Okay, well, excellent. We'll look forward to learning more about that. Thank you, David. And we're going to be back in just a minute with more Bay Sunday after the break. So stay right there.